are in need. All who are searching for you. Please join me in singing Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, 686 in your hymnal. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Let us kneel together for the recitation of the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, 
Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who see us that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, 
Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Today's psalm is Psalm 95. We will read responsibly by half verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with song. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness. At Meribah and on that day at Massah, when they tempted me. They put me to the test. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wavering in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath. They shall not enter into my rest. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, Now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. We'll sing together our sequence hymn 658 in your hymnal as the deer longs for the cooling stream. The first and the last verse. The first and the last verse. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, be to you. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. 
A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to him, Everyone who drinks to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming back here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do, not, do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves that we know 
that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. You may be seated. In my time working as a hospital-based social worker, journeying with survivors of human trafficking, some of the most profound learning I experienced about how to approach the work came from a wise colleague named Ursel. One of the gifts of the program where I worked, which was called Adelante, Moving Forward with Hope, was a, a team model we held. Rather than just being offered a social worker, any patient who came to our program was also offered the support of a peer specialist. In this case, Ursel, who had lived experience as a survivor of trafficking and had engaged in enough of her own recovery work to be able to, spe to step into the immense role of support and share about her own journey with others. On the first case we worked together, I remember pouring through the electronic medical record of the patient, who for today I'll call Maria, to gather all the data I could to feel prepared before we went to see her in her hospital room. The words drug seeking, borderline, unwilling to cooperate were sprinkled through the chart more times than I could count. And when we got up to the floor and checked in with the assigned medical team about Maria, she was quickly labeled a frequent flyer and multiple eye rolls were exchanged among staff about how much of a handful she was. So as we walked into the room, Ursel closed the door, making sure no one else could come in, and asked me if she could take the lead, as she had a feeling that Maria may take a little bit more to warm up to a social worker. So as Father Marshall would say, I stepped back, became wallpaper for a few moments, and bore witness to Ursel meeting Maria for the first time. Over the course of the next few hours, the initial defenses and questions sizing us up about whether we could be trusted slowly began to fade. Ursel had Maria standing and looking at herself in the mirror of the hospital room saying, I am beautiful. My life matters. I have a feeling that Jesus' encounter and conversation with the Samaritan woman who we meet today looks somewhat like this. We have all sorts of assumptions going in. At the time of Jesus, Jews and Samaritans were enemies. And in a commentary podcast for this week's lectionary, scholar Joy J. Moore points out that as a Jew at the time, the last route you would want to take is through Samaria. And Jesus could have realistically found an alternative, safer route. And then there's the matter of this Samaritan woman's identity. Very much like the medical charts of my patients, Jesus and we are given, given the opportunity to judge this woman's morals, her values, and her ways of living. Yet rather than letting assumptions lead the way, Jesus takes time to listen and build trust with her. As you may have sensed in your patient listening of today's gospel, this passage is actually the longest conversation that Jesus holds with anyone in any of the Gospels. Given the likely trauma that this woman had survived and the differences in identity, there's a slower progression of warming up to Jesus. And Jesus is more than okay to take the time needed to open both their hearts to one another. 
Jesus sticks with her in her initial defensiveness and questioning and bears witness in such a powerful way that this woman leaves her water jug at the well, returns to her city and shares, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Imagine someone telling you everything you have ever done. To be honest, that would feel kind of weird or maybe a little bit creepy. However, in this context, I think it's much less about knowing all the intimate details of her life, but rather truly feeling seen and known by Jesus. In his bearing witness to the Samaritan woman, Jesus allows her to feel like she belongs, belongs as a part of the body of Christ. During our encounters with Maria during the first hospitalization when we met her, we unfortunately were unable to place her in safe housing or shelter or do anything that felt tangibly like we could fix her situation. However, when she returned two months later to the hospital, she asked her nurse to speak with us. She also gave her our phone number to a friend who was journeying through similar challenges and they reached out to Ursel. I learned from Ursel the deep importance of taking that time to slowly build trust and establish safety so that when survivors know they have a safe, welcoming place to land, whether they're ready for it now or ready for it later. The portion of Paul's letter to the Romans today is one of those dangerous texts or texts of terror, as they may be known, that when taken out of context, has been used to justify suffering or abusive action done towards others. However, when placed alongside this gospel for today, also offers us a sacred reminder of the hope that is possible in the aftermath of suffering when journeying through trauma, through hardship of any kind, a sense of belonging and connection and being seen that Jesus offers a Samaritan woman brings a sense of hope, hope that she and others don't have to do this all alone. As we continue to journey through Lent, I pray we might consider how we can try to lay down our assumptions our narratives about others, and listen deeply. Listen deeply so that we can remain open to the mutual transformation and belonging possible in the love of the body of Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you now to stand and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is.
With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for William, our bishop, and Sally, our bishop-elect, for Marshall, our rector, and Elizabeth, our associate, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this borough of Spotswood, for every city, city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For all on our parish prayer list, including Elizabeth, Rick, Chris and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Anne, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, George, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, the O'Donnell family, Peter, Ethel, Wayne, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Vula, Lorraine and Jeffrey, let us pray to the Lord. For all whom we give thanks, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of South India. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Ministry of Transition Consultants. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Danielle, David, Patricia, Cliff, and Lillian. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for the depart for the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in, the, in and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, of blessed Peter, our patron, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, 
that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. God's peace and grace to you. Welcome home to St. Peter's. We are honored to uh, welcome someone home who's actually uh, been with us uh, for uh, a funeral, but now is with us on Sunday. Wayne Hugh, uh, if you could stand, Wayne. Uh, just give him a round of applause. He is, he is coming in for uh, Miss Jessica. She's away. Uh, she is with family in Canada. Uh, this is the one year anniversary of her grandmother's passing, so we're very honored to have you with us, sir. And substituting, thank you very much for being here. That's that those dulcet tones you heard arcing out. It weren't mine. <laughs> it was his. So welcome, God's peace, and good to have you with us. There is a vestry meeting tomorrow night. Uh, we look forward to gathering the leadership of the church. Um, just be aware of that. For those on vestry, mark your calendars. We'll see you at six thirty in the parish hall. For those of you who are not on vestry but want to follow along, you'll be able to see the report on what we talked about. Um, in the coming e-news probably next week. But I just wanted to alert you to that. Um, we're moving into a new season. And another thing that I want to uh, draw your attention to is that as the seasons change, uh, things are going to be happening around the property. So mark your calendars for April 22nd and 23rd. On the 22nd, we're going to be doing some mulch spreading. On the 23rd, come to church with some work clothes on and work, work gloves in hand. And if you're not praying, you're clearing. So uh, please do join us for that. We look forward to sharing that time together, making the grounds look beautiful for the spring. I met with Ralph Evans this past week. We have a plan for the planting of the garden for the uh, parish garden for Community Folk Ministries. Um, if you'd like to participate in that, speak to me or, or to Ralph after the services. Um, we'll make sure that you get keyed into that. You can sponsor a bed and offer some plantings. You can participate in uh, the weeding and the harvesting. We always appreciate that support if you can't and of course be here on the 22nd and the 23rd when we get the beds ready for planting the other thing we're going to be doing is doing a little bit of an expansion the garden bed that's in front of the the porch of the rectory is going to get some winter squash uh, that we're going to plant um, and get in there and also hopefully some pumpkins so uh, there's a lot going on in the garden this coming year we look forward to sharing that with you Next week is Leitere Sunday. That is Pink Sunday. We are excited about that. Yeah, Lent's going fast, Rosita. You gotta, you gotta keep up. It's rolling. Um, we are over the midpoint hump and we're moving towards Leitere Sunday. Leitere Sunday is a Latin, the Leitere is a Latin word for rejoice. It's the antiphon that uh, is sung in the introit of the worship service in the old rite. Um, but the idea here is this is the moment when you can lift your Lenten disciplines a little bit. Um, so Devin, that dark chocolate you've been not eating and saving for later, um, you can have uh, on, on, on Le Terry Sunday. I'm just kidding, he hates dark chocolate. White chocolate, brother, white chocolate, or strawberry chocolate. But if you've been saving that, if that's been part of your discipline as a fast, it's a time to relax your fast. But most importantly, it's a time for us to gather and rejoice. We're gonna have an extended and uh, expanded coffee hour that day, so uh, if you're coming to the eight o'clock service, linger. If you're coming to the 10 o'clock service, come early. As well, we have a guest preacher. The Reverend Deacon Tricia Thorm is gonna be with us. She is the executive director of our Diocesan Episcopal Community Services. Uh, and as well, she was the deacon of the table at Reverend Liz's ordination. Uh, deacon Thorm is gonna be with us. She is gonna be preaching to the gospel, as well as giving us a, a bit of a snapshot into the work and witness of what ECS is doing. This foundation was created in these last couple of years under the direction and, uh, and request of Bishop Stokes in order to make sure that we as a diocese are able to pool resources and help communities that are underserved and populations that are under-resourced. So it's a great way for us to participate in doing what we already do here at St. Peter's with Community Folk Ministries on a diocesan level. St. Peter's is actually one of the founding partners of ECS and with uh, Community Folk Ministries combined, we are continuing to support that mission and ministry. Very excited to have her with us. This is her first year in pocket as being the executive director. She's already made an enormous impact on our life as a diocese, and I look forward to hearing what she has to share with you guys about that work. I'm also, she hooked me into being on the advisory board, so, you know, I'm, I'm getting our money's worth on that regard as well. 
Um, please do as well keep an eye on the e-news. We're going to be setting up a schedule for Holy Week, as you know, uh, or if you're about to learn. Uh, we do what's called a pilgrimage in place. That means that from Palm Sunday all the way through to that uh, moment when you, pit, when you sit down to your Easter Sunday dinner, we are busy in worship and service. So we've got something happening every night of the week. Um, and throughout that experience, we also are doing our best to walk alongside Christ as he turns his face from Jerusalem to Calvary. Please do make sure you review that schedule, notate it. You're gonna have an opportunity to participate as well because we need people to support us in reading and helping out with ushering and all those different things. It's a lot of all hands on deck moments. And if you are feeling particularly inspired and wanna join us for the polishing and cleaning of this beautiful sacred place, um, we do that every year on Holy Saturday just to make sure everything's fresh and good to go. Um, you don't have to be a professional altar guild person for this. You just have to have a willingness to get your hands a little dirty and, um, and join in the polishing and the freshening of all that is beautiful in the sanctuary so we are prepared for the great mysteries of the resurrection after Holy Week. Uh, that's pretty much it. You got anything? Uh, Wednesday night. Yes, Wednesday night. Uh, we just had our uh, Sunday School Lenten series on, uh, on what it means to be displaced. And in this particular week, we are looking at how war causes displacement. And in the very, uh, very powerful image of the Babylonian exile, this is the fall of Jerusalem and the transport of the people of the kingdom of Judah into captivity in Babylon. And we'll be looking at how that experience coupled with the way war affects us even today. Um, to, be a, to be mindful of how war causes displacement. So please do join us for that. That is a Zoom call at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. I hope you're able to take part in it. That will be available both in our e-news as a live link, and as well if you want to give a call or send an email to Chris or I, we'll make sure you have that link and you can join us. But I really appreciate all the support we're getting on this. As you know, this is a curriculum that my mother and I helped create with the Task Force on Refugees and Resettlement here in the diocese. And it's being used both in Lent and will be used in Easter by different churches across the diocese, including St. Peter's. So if you're able to join us, we hope you will. I think that's everything. Welcome all again and welcome home to St. Peter's. Please do join us for Eucharist. Uh, you may have heard this before, but I'll say it again. The silver chalice that will be to the side of the person distributing bread is for sipping. It is sanitary. Um, so please be aware that it is okay to sip from that chalice. If you choose for intinction, the person with the gold chalice will be there to lend a hand. If you would just prefer the bread on your cross palms, they'll take that from you and extend your tongue. They will dip it into the wine and place it onto your tongue. If they do make any contact with you, they will, of course, set the chalice down, go and sanitize and come back to the fray. But know that we are happy to welcome all home to St. Peter's by God's grace. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. And we will sing together, my dear ones, this piece from Lift Every Voice and Sing in your worship, be worship leaflet, Near the Cross. Let's sing together. Please rise.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and an institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. La noche en que fue lo traicionaron Jesús tomó pan y después de darte gracias lo partió y se lo compartió con sus discípulos y dijo, tomen y coman, esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes, hagan esto en memoria mía. Después de cenar tomó el caliz y después de darte gracias lo compartió y dijo, Beban todos, porque esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. Con toda humildad te pedimos, oh Padre piadoso, que nos escuches y que con tu palabra y santo espíritu bendigas y santifiques estas ofrendas de pan y vino para que sean para nosotros el cuerpo y la sangre de tu amado Hijo Jesucristo. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now in the language of our heart, 
We pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Get in the language of your heart, we join in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to mark and celebrate? None again. I tell you, either people are hiding or... All right, all right. You know what? I know what, how we're going to respond to that. We're going to sing an old, wonderful barn burner of a hymn. You into this one? I want to hear you guys sing it out. 685 in your hymnal. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. 685. We'll do them all. 685 all the way through. All right, here we go. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side that flow be of sin the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. Should my tears forever flow, should my seal no longer know, all for sin could not atone, thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring, simply to my dross I cling. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Mira, mira a esta tu familia, Dios Todopoderoso, que tor que por tu gran bondad pueda ser gobernada y preservada eternamente por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved forevermore through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a, and a ladybug decided to hang out with us today. And it's a live one. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord and the ladybug. Thanks be to God. Come here, Eleanor. You can carry her out. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, sure. Great. 